It is a marvel of military technology. Powered by a turbine engine, able to strike from two miles away, and built with armor so advanced it can survive a direct hit. This is the Abrams tank, and manning this weapon are some of the best trained crews in history, the elite of the tank forces. Going out there and seeing a tank fire for the first time, just the sheer power and shock and awe effect that that, that main gun has when it goes off. They live in their machines for months on end, even as temperatures soar to 130 degrees. Delivering power with pinpoint accuracy, the Abrams is one of the most versatile and fearsome weapons on the battlefield. When a ground war breaks out, one weapon is always on the front lines. The tip of the spear, Abrams' main battle tanks blaze a trail Army and Marines, racing into battle at over 40 miles per hour. They are a deadly combination of superior crews and the latest in military hardware. With a 120 millimeter main gun and three other major weapons, they're highly mobile fortresses. A weapon that has become indispensable to the U.S. armed forces. Even once feared Soviet tanks stand little chance against them. No Abrams has ever been knocked out by an enemy tank. What is it that makes the Abrams so successful? For many Marine tankers, mastery of the Abrams begins 5,000 miles away at a base in California called 29 Palms. Here, temperatures in the Mojave Desert feel like Iraq, but there's a warm welcome home for returning veterans. 50,000 Marines a year rotate through 29 Palms, the Corps' premier live fire base. Covering over 900 square miles, the base contains test ranges set up to challenge new and veteran tank crews. Because no matter how well built this fighting machine is, it's only as good as its crew. Second Lieutenant John Ranieri is learning the ropes as the new platoon commander in a team that will deploy for combat in a few months. Yeah, you're good. They're in Delta Company, 1st Tank Battalion, which led the charge to Baghdad in Operation Iraqi Freedom. It's the tank commander's job to keep his team together and to coordinate with the other three tanks in his platoon. One of the biggest challenges I had to learn right away was uh, be able to multitask. It's hands down the most important asset uh, a tank commander can have. You have several radios, people talking to your headset all at once. You have to be able to flip those switches as well as uh, work your 50 cal, make sure your gunner is killing the enemy, and also uh, keep the tank on the right track. So multitasking is key. A four-man crew operates every Abrams. The driver sits in a compartment in the hull. He steers it like a bicycle and controls the throttle and brakes, seeing bumper to bumper through periscopes on his hatch. The tank commander and loader sit mid-turret on either side of the breech for the Abrams 120 millimeter main gun. There's room for 17 rounds immediately behind the loader with another 34 in a blast-proof chamber in the back of the turret. The gunner sits in front of the tank commander. From his position, the gunner scans for targets through a periscope that has optical and thermal scopes with three and 10 times magnification. If his periscope is destroyed, he can use an optical sight that's lined up with the main gun. 
the gunner uses a switch to designate the ammo for the main gun and also fires a 7.62 millimeter machine gun. He spins the turret independently of the tank body, searching for targets through his sights. A computerized stabilization system keeps the gun platform steady while the vehicle itself pitches, rolls, and yaws. The turret is balanced so precisely that it can spin 360 degrees without shifting the tank's center of gravity. When the gunner has a target in his sights, the commander gives the order to fire. The tank commander can also stand in his hatch and operate the top-mounted 50 caliber machine gun. In addition to their specialized roles, each team member must act as the tank's eyes and ears. Everyone on the tank has their, uh, their own little slice of the pie they can see out of. The driver, he's got a, a, an eye level you know, view of what's just in front of us. The loader will usually watch behind the tank and to the side and kind of give us a heads up view over there. The gunner has a very small world. He only sees what he sees through his sight. Uh, I'm able to either be up out of the hatch or looking through all my periscopes around here and I uh, can kind of pull all together and uh, keep the whole tank moving the right direction and keep the gun on target. Learning how to keep their gun on target Crews go through a grueling series of live fire tests at 29 Palms. The idea is, is to get the crew management for the uh, tank commander down so that if he does have to engage in Iraq, it may not be a tank, but it may be a technical vehicle or uh, a bad guy up in a window somewhere, but the procedures are still all, all the same. For eight days, commanding officers observe their tank crews as they work together in combat readiness tests. Close both ballistic doors. The core of the test is a live fire exercise. Okay, just be advised, any turrets that come up on this range are going to be after them. Roger, that one right in front of the one we gave to that as well. The ranges and targets simulate almost any scenario an Abrams crew might encounter. This is uh, what we call a Femtig target that uh, enables us to lower the targets and present them via computer from a uh, tower that right now is about 1,400 meters behind us. And what will happen is, is he's going to sit there and scan from his position, whether he's stationary or whether he's uh, on the attack. But once this target pops up, he sees exactly what you're seeing right now. He's going to see a blackened silhouette. They can have targets pop up basically whenever they want. It becomes second nature to you. You know where to aim. How quickly the crew responds when a target pops up and how accurately they fire determines their score. Bring it up, bring it up. The ranges aren't designed to be easy. Several of the targets are almost a mile away, and many move. I'm on the stationary. For a new crew, two misses and one hit, the score needs to improve dramatically. Each team needs to score 700 out of 1,000 with the goal of performing at their top level before shipping out. Because if you miss once in combat, you might not get another shot. The biggest likeness to Iraq is the fact that it's open. By just moving 10 to 20 feet, you can find a new piece of ground to hide in. So the way the targets present themselves would be very similar to a way, say, an enemy tank or, or an enemy vehicle might present itself. You can fight from anywhere from open desert terrain like you see out of here to urban built-up areas like Fallujah all the way to a swampy area that have palm groves in it that you have to be it's, you have to be a multi-echelon type fighter for the environment. And few weapons can dominate in every environment like the Abrams. <laughs> 